I guess you have kind of been affected by this. <laughs> I keep bringing back this and you're like, don't talk actually, about this, Wangare. Uh, no, I've been affected actually twice. <laughs> twice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, my brother. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, 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 to me, one of the things that I, I came to bring it back to me is like, the first thing you have to do is that you're dispensable. tech industry is ever evolving um there's ups there's downs this time tech is the hottest thing this times it's not there's been layoffs since what late last year and this is small businesses big tech has laid off um google microsoft zoom accenture there's so many big tech um companies that are laying off at the moment and then, yeah, it's just a lot of emotions that can come in. Should I get into tech? Should I tr- try going to like big tech? Um, and that's what we're going to be delving into today. Um, I'll intro Chris. I think we all know Chris, but um, <laughs> what's your hot take on um, the big layoffs that are happening? I think they were inevitable. They were inevitable. Okay. Yeah, it was bound to, to happen. If you look at uh, how tech gets funded vis traditional companies. Traditional companies tend to be, you set up a small company, it grows organically. Yeah. And then at some point, the company starts making profits. Yes. And then now they can afford more things. Yeah. Uh, hire more people, have a better office for that. Most tech companies was based on this idea that I have an idea, I get funded, then I sell the company to somebody else or it gets acquired and it, most companies were never projected towards profitability. Yeah. And for you to get a company to become of high value so you can sell it to somebody at a high value, you used to have, uh, let's call it, you're propping up the uh, uh, the company. Uh, it's, let's say, uh, I own a car. Yes. Right? It costs a million shillings. But in the next five years, I want to sell this car for five million. So I can go around, you know, advertising this car is good, getting other people to do that. So... A lot of the tech funding came from propping up the company. So, okay, you fund the company, yeah. then you prop it up, and then you sell it. So what that meant was that the salaries that people received, the amount of people who are, or, or are hired was not commensurate to the, the real value of the company Okay. from a profitability perspective. So now, when all of a sudden now all companies or startups have to be profitable, then they realize we are... <laughs> Over, overstaffed yeah. uh, for that. So we have to cut down for that. So you know what happens is tech companies are being cut down to reality yeah. of what a traditional company would have been. So that's like the common script. It's macroeconomic issues, the war in Ukraine, trying to balance operating costs with profits. But what about it's, big tech? Like big tech, I don't think I, like... I, actually, the main driving factor is yeah. one thing. Yeah. They can all be traced back to COVID. But I... Let me explain why. <laughs> yeah. I was reading some financial uh, documents which said that every, uh, let's call it a trough. Yeah. So during COVID, people lost their jobs so yes. and so forth. The American government decided they have to prop up the market, yeah, yeah. which means that people who are laid off, we have to give them some minimum amount of uh, uh, salary. Uh, they have to. Uh, uh, resuscitate the economy. Yeah. Which means they printed a lot of money. Yeah. Once they print a lot of money, what happens in an economy? Things become expensive. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Now, when things becomes very expensive, at some point, you have to ensure that if Unga is a thousand bob, you have to ensure that Unga goes back to 200 bob and 100 uh, yeah. shilling. So, in case that market has to deflate. So, the, the, uh, U.S. government's uh, approach to f- overfund certain issues, print more money, made there was a lot of money. So they have to deflate the economy. Okay. So when they have to deflate the economy, it means they have to raise interest rates. That's what they do, which means access to money becomes very hard. How do we fund tech? In the U.S., you can access uh, capital at or, yeah. or a loan at a 1% or a 2%. Yeah. So you get a loan for 1%. Bring it and invest it in Africa or in other areas where returns are likely higher. Then you pay your 1%, 2% interest rate, and then you're able to uh, use the proceeds over here to do that. So when, the, so let's say the rates go higher to about 5%, yeah, and you're unable to make a return of, let's say, 10% in the emerging markets, yeah, then access to money becomes very 
hard. hard yeah. So now all the funding dries out because the, the funders use the ch- cheap money, they call it in the US for that. So money is no longer cheap in the in the US. So all the startups that were, were hoping to raise more money can no longer raise yeah. uh, money. For big tech, yes. what happens is that the deflation caused the market to contract. Yeah. So when the market contracts, it means well, not. if you used to sell more yeah. software, people cannot buy those people software. People afford it, yeah. So Spotify, people are cancelling their Spotify uh, subscriptions. When they, there's no enough money, what's the first thing that you do? You cancel your Spotify, you cancel <laughs> your pocket, the, yeah. you, 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 all those things that you don't necessarily need, need, yeah. uh, need nice so you cancel have. them. Yeah. So the tech, the big tech looks at, okay, our, our gaming market, our software market is shrinking, so we can't support the salaries. Yeah. So... Uh, that happens so tech world is finally coming to the real world yeah but is it when you say it's finally coming to the real world what do you mean the real world what is how what does that mean yeah look look, look at uh, let's look at uh, banking is a very good example yeah, yeah. okay where, uh, and you are going to talk about banking <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. no because both of us have worked in banking <laughs> and, and we understand <laughs> yeah they will hire and fire depending on how the economy performs yeah that never used to be the tech world yeah. The tech world, the people, if you look at an engineer in a tech world, will earn the same salary as a manager in a bank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So the tech world was never at par with what the real world was. Because sometimes you used to go and quote your salary. Ask, and you're like, um. And you're like, oh. <laughs> You're like a HOD, you're asking a HOD salary. <laughs> and you're an engineer. <laughs> and you're an engineer. Yeah. Uh, for that. So, first of all, from a salary perspective, there was never a par with the real uh, economy, if you may call it so. Second, the hiring and firing was never... The econ- The real economy would really, like, if you lose your job today and I lose mine, you lose your house health. Yeah. yeah. You lose your guard yeah. and everybody else. But in the tech world, that never used to happen. Yeah. Because it was always being propped by uh, the cheap money. Yeah. So that's the second time that there's, there's no parity. And the third was where... <laughs> Every time you companies that had innovation departments, yes, we were part of that. <laughs> <laughs> we had nice offices, good uh, parks, good uh, parks. Yeah. We used to come to work at 10, 11 <laughs> <laughs> when <laughs> everyone is reporting at eight. Yeah, <laughs> so we were never part of the real economy. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Right, and now finally, like, hey guys, you have to be part of the economy. One of the things also was that in each department, in each business, we were forced. Everyone was forced to think about profitability, like yes. how your job. Yeah. The t- engineering teams. I've never, you don't even know what that yeah, is. My work like, is to build cool shit. Yeah, yeah. That's it, right? Yeah. But now you're forced to figure out as an engineer, how, how does do your you- work f- focus on the bottom line, which is profitability for that? Yeah. So if you go to banking, a watchman or a guard at the uh, branch. Yeah, they know. He's more <laughs> of like a customer case. Like he's taught, like, if you treat people well, They'll come to the branch and we'll make more money. Yeah. So they're tied to the bottom line. Or like sometimes, I know I don't know which bank it was. Like if you'd go and they're they're trying to be digital, like their scary would tell you, I don't remember, mm-hmm. would tell you like, hey, actually there's an app for this. Yeah. Like just so use the So the guy app. has to sell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the tech guys never used to sell. The yeah. tech guys are like, we're here to write code, build products. And that, yeah, end vibes of story. and inshallah, yeah. yeah. Now you're being forced to think like a traditional company. How do you impact it? Like, it's not about building an app. It's not about changing the UI and all the awesome things you do. How does it impact the bottom line? Yeah. So now you're finally getting to how a real company is supposed to work. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, like, the, as, as you've mentioned, there have been layoffs in big tech, you know, um, Google, Microsoft. And usually all you have to do sometimes is have that on your CV. Um it's bringing some competition into the market because um, I'd imagine there's like engineers who worked for micro, the big tech and they're trying to get into these companies. But then again, it's a global, you know, it's a global employment, especially in tech. You can work from anywhere. Um, yeah. How's yeah. that? Do you think how's that playing out? I'd say if you're just getting started with your career, you're screwed. <laughs> my foot, my hope. Oh, 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 my story is all my struggles, all my hopes. Oh, my I can't even register. Oh my god! Because oh my god! <laughs> because now there is there is talent which has worked in Microsoft, Google, Twitter, Amazon. They have experience that you've never had, and you're competing for the same jobs. Yeah. Uh, with them, 
it's unfortunate, but now that's what's happened. I, I remember there's a very interesting story. So uh, there's there's a tool or SDK called OpenCV. Mm -hmm. It's a it's an SDK used for doing computer vision. It's yeah. like the best so far in the market. How how it became to be built was when the USSR broke. Yeah. Uh, and then Russia or the USSR had a lot of uh, nuclear engineers in Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and all these other countries. Now, all of a sudden, they had to go back to their mother country because the USSR no longer existed. But there were so many unemployed nuclear physicists who yeah. had PhDs. And part of being a physicist means you have to do analysis and yeah. be very good at coding and stuff like that. So someone in the US, I talked to someone, uh, it was, was it IBM? I think, yeah. They wanted to build a computer, the OpenCV tool. But there were not enough engineers in the US who could build it. And the ones who were there were very expensive. Yeah. Then I think someone from IBM took a trip to Russia and discovered there's a whole village of nuclear physicists who have, <laughs> have nothing, nothing to, to do. do. <laughs> yeah. So like, you hey guys, if I pay you like a thousand dollars, like, yeah, I've not worked for six months. Uh, give me something. So he went back to IBM and pitched. So they took all these unemployed nuclear physicists. Nuclear physicists. Oh, cool. They put them in one city or town where the, like free housing. Yeah, yeah. Booze, oh, wow. booze is there. <laughs> Just build this thing like uh, Vladimir. Is this, is this what you want to build? <laughs> Let's call this within like a very short period, like which was like, I think six months. Yeah, they completely built the OpenCV library, and this is like in C programming language. Yeah, and they hand it over to IBM uh, for for other things. And people are like, Oh my god, wow, wow, wow. yeah. So, this glut in the people who are laid off massively enable us now to do all these awesome things we do with OpenCV. So similar thing now to Kenya and other markets where you have now highly experienced people. Yeah. No jobs. No jobs. Yeah. yeah. There is an opportunity to take them. But that means now, if there's no opportunity, now they're being absorbed into the traditional uh, companies. Yeah. Uh, your, your normal uh, banks, insurance companies, companies yeah. uh, so and so forth. So if you're a new talent, it means... You just have to up your game to compete with people who have five, ten years experience solving global uh, okay. problems. But for anyone who wants to build something cool on the cheap, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they have they have the mark. There's there's the need and there's a demand right there's now. There's a demand and there's the uh, the skills. Yeah, this uh, Microsoft Kenya. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> laid off a couple of people that I know. Yeah, they're in the market and they're looking for consulting. Uh, gigs but i mean I, g I guess like yeah just talking about microsoft kenya um i mean i think it's tough like like you've been as you've said you have really used to high salaries yeah. and like your income like you've changed from either being middle income to now you're uh, like very wealthy you have many assets and loads of liabilities absolutely and then bang this happens like you know, <laughs> <laughs> from an emotional, from an emotional, yeah, from an emotional, yeah, it must be very draining. And even apart yeah. from that, you know, I say adapting to a normal office, you don't like yeah, all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Then and it's <laughs> even like just a Kenyan <laughs> office, just like wow. Moving you know, from I don't know Bupat insurance to GA insurance, moving from you know just like your your back, like it's as you said, it's back to kind of reality. Back to reality because I, yeah. I think so. I've had the privilege of working for two companies that had innovation departments mm -hmm. and all of them like nice parks. Oh yeah. yeah for nice sure. digs, nice place to walk yeah. from using a MacBook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. a very extreme, very nice uh, MacBook. And then together you're, you're, you're given uh, uh, a Lenovo laptop. Yeah, you're like, with what? A, <laughs> I've never used it. I don't even know. <laughs> with 4GB RAM. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be the office at, at, at eight. So starting from that, that's that's wrong. And you have to come into the office, baby. There's no idea. Yeah, I'm working from home. Ah, yeah. Working from home is a luxury. Yeah, you yeah. can't afford. Yeah. And first of all, you're solving different types of problems. Initially, you're solving global problems. Yeah, now it's like... You're solving this different... Uh, local. Problem. You have to do more with less, even the, the equipment you're given. And, you know, you look at your health uh, insurance card. It's very generous that it supports yeah. you with your family. And all of a sudden, it's just you <laughs> yeah, or you and your spouse that have to do that. But I think it's both a good and a bad thing from my perspective. Why is it a good thing? Let's start with that. You're finally coming back to reality. Oh, You've been living in the coming. moon. <laughs> you know, tech people, every time you interview a tech guy, it's, it, they feel like they're not... Entitlement. They, there's entitlement. Yeah, I agree. I completely yeah, for agree. That. So, like... Yeah. The, Come back to reality. Think how Mama mm. Boga would think. Yeah. The guy who's running a supermarket 
in Ruaka. Yeah. Think as that guy used to to think. But you think like you know we are these special people. You know, we 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 deserve special things. Yeah, I think that's the good part. Is like you're being cut back to. You come back to reality. You're, yeah. you're getting cut back to reality. Mm-hmm. It's a painful process. Oh no, it is. It's an emotionally draining uh, process. And think about if you're used to like you know you're flying to the to the, to, to the Nigerian office, you're flying to the <laughs> Ugandan office, and now you're stuck in. No matter to. You have to perhaps sell your car. You yeah. know, I live in Kilimani. Yeah. Now you have to. Of course, there's a, there's an emotional drain. You have to cut down certain things that you you're you 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 are used to. But to me, I think yeah. <laughs> I decided purposely like I need to attach myself to the reality. Yeah, uh, and that's why I think going back to are you solving local problems? Are you grounded yeah. to like the yeah. problems like in the continent? Yeah, then you realize in Kenya. You, yeah, you you, you uh, and, uh, let's take two examples. Mm-hmm. One is when let's take maybe your work in the data science. And your work is to optimize some algorithm mm-hmm. or some such. Uh, let's say you work for Microsoft and you want to optimize how Bing yeah, works. Yeah. Bing, <laughs> actually, someone is talking about Bing, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then it's, it's it's in data science. Then someone else is trying to figure out how do I make my Mamboga become lendable by using data. Yeah. You're still in the data science, but those are completely two different problems. Two, two, two different fields. Yeah. In the first case. You only care about code and what needs yeah, to be But the other one, you have to go interview people. Yep. Qua <laughs> ground uh, vitu ni different, as they say. It. You yeah. have to go there and talk to people, and before you apply your your data science stuff, it's um, you need to understand the problem. You need the to understand research, the problem. You have to, like, research, yeah, you have to yeah. dig yourself deep, and uh, you know, as people like bashing startups like Kune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just came in, you know. Uh, you know, they didn't spend time on the on the, on the, on the ground on the, on the problem. Yeah. So the first thing it switches your mind is this economy is very different than let's say the American, the American. Economy, economy and the European economy. So there's abundance, I always say. There's just so much abundance yeah. in the here. You economies. really, really need. Yeah. It's more about the people. It's yeah. more about customer behavior. That's what will make you a success. Not that I figured out using some complex algorithm to optimize. <laughs> uh, some so it brings you back to reality where you operate. Yeah. in uh, in the country. Okay. If you look at the problems that uh, we have in Kenya, mm. probably like 50% will be in agriculture because agriculture is our biggest. Yeah, it's our biggest. Yes. Yeah. So Industry. lending to farmers, f- uh, farming inputs, uh, farm waste, uh, get markets and yeah. all that. So there'll be a lot food of... Food security, man. Yeah, so much. Food security. So, uh, so, <laughs> so, so, forth. so you'll have those problems. <clears throat> then you'll have healthcare problems. You know, access to health, access to better health, so on and so forth. Then perhaps you might go to security. Northern Kenya is not that. Before you get into computer vision, AI, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like that's almost not a problem it's for us. It's not, yeah. Uh, I agree. Uh, for us. So like if, first you need to digitize all these things to even yeah. like get there. Yeah. So if you're an engineer, if you're a data scientist, the first thing you need to look at, where are the problems to be solved? They're in agriculture. They're in health, they're in banking, yeah. they're in insurance, fi- insurance, finance. So much. So. Those are what the problems uh, are. So if you have to thrive in this economy, those are heavily, uh, those are areas which are heavily on user behavior. Yeah. How comes insurance uptake is very low in Kenya, for example? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yet it's something that could really, really yeah, help. Yeah, it could make a huge impact. Yeah, but, a but lot think of, about yeah. like someone who lives in Kibera, for example. It is one of the areas where when Mandamano starts... <laughs> It's affected. Yeah, sadly, yeah. When, let's say, COVID was different, but I'm assuming if a pandemic was to happen, they'll be affected heavily. Yeah. Uh, healthcare yeah. is affected. Security-wise, yeah. I'm not sure, but I think it could also be affected. So it's an area where you should you need insurance almost for anything. Yeah. For fire, yeah. Uh, for, for political violence, for anything else. But it's, yeah. it's what very... Is it? What's the penetration rate? Three percent. Oh, I thought it was five. So it's, it's, wow, that's pretty low. It's three percent. And they heavily need that insurance. So for you to, to crack that problem, you need to sit down with the people, yeah. understand their lives, yeah. understand how they go about their day-to-day, what really drives them. Okay. Then you do a product placement and then finally collect data and then now you can bring all the engineers Engin- and, and, all the, that and awesome the data stuff. scientists for that. But let me ask you, like, you've touched on something which is always like very interesting. You, like from what I'm hearing you see, it's like start thinking, yeah, start solving problems, but startups as well have been affected. Right, like you at Sandy, you are affected. There's been layoffs at Sandy. You are affected personally. How? What's 
<laughs> like, <laughs> what is the solution there? If like layoffs are happening in big tech, small tech, even some you've known, they've not even made announcement that you, you know, know. My my <laughs> antidote to layoff, especially yeah. in tech, is gain a skill that is useful in the real economy. Okay. If you're, you know, if you're a data scientist, for example, mm-hmm. it is a skill people can do without in a company. That's true. And I like that you know that. <laughs> and I think that's like, that's, that'd be okay with that. Just like, you know, yes, this skill yeah. is not really, yeah. yeah. But yeah. a finance person, an operational person, person, they're very core to a company. A finance guy is needed in any business. Any business, business yeah. Right? An ops guy is needed oh, yeah. in any business. Especially if they're in Africa. Right? <laughs> yeah, operations. Yeah, and yeah. I, was, I was asking somebody, we were just having a debate and asking, do you know any CEO or how many CEOs, let's pick the top 100 companies in Kenya. Mm-hmm. How many of them are technical? Zero, I think. Unless it's like startups. Yeah, unless but it's the like, founder. Yeah, exactly. But like... Yeah. Like, so rarely you get tech people being CEOs. Okay. Right? That tells you people who are CEO are sales... Yeah, finance, either, yeah, finance or operations. Yeah, sometimes marketing, but to a lesser extent. Yeah, those are the core skills that cut across any business. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's it's the skills where you are less likely to be laid off, if I if I might say uh, so. So the antidote to, to lay off is start getting those finance skills, start getting some op skills, start yeah. getting some product building, marketing skills, okay. right? Because now we become more useful. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if a company wants to lay off, they look at who do we need less. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the bottom line. Yeah, because they're trying to cut operating costs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and salaries. So and yeah. if you're, let's say, for example, a logistics company, it's heavy on operations. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to cut your your you're like okay, let's because it will at, affect the business, right? Yes, yeah. Let's look at tech. Let's look at <laughs> data. Let's look at uh, other areas where we can trim yeah. and not affect the core part of the the business. Yeah. So, in, in in Kenya and in Africa, it, a lot of tech companies tend to be tech-enabled businesses. Yes. Which means you're using software or technology to to, en- to enable to a business, yeah. right? If you look at like Microsoft, Microsoft is a tech business because they sell technology. Yes. Amazon, okay, it's partly a tech Parts business. It's both, yeah. It's both. Yeah. But a lot of startups, especially <clears throat> in, in, in Kenya, they're tech-enabled business. I, I, I'm yet to come across, oh, there's one. Which one? Onger. Oh, is which one is that one? Onger, they sell. Uh, it's an integration <laughs> platform. Voice that, and no. No, no. So, so let's say you have WhatsApp, yeah. you have Facebook, you have Twitter, and as a company, you interact with your customers in all these channels. Mm. So it's very hard for a customer experience uh, person to log into Twitter, check their DMs, yeah, yeah. So it's go to so many. Yeah, yeah. So it integrates all your channels and gives you one interface. Okay. So you can respond to your to your to your customer. And I think they were quite su- successful. It's been a while since I checked mm. on them, but they are selling software. Yeah. That's the, <clears throat> the primary business. But a lot of other startups. But I think one of them key things would be around sales to corporates who can afford their services, which again is yeah, like and also they don't sell only to Kenya because they're selling software. Yeah, they can and WhatsApp is international. Global. It's global. But they have a lot of a competition in that. Like they are global products that are doing that also. Of course. So yeah. now now they figure out their their yeah. proposition, yeah. add other things, analytics, yeah. so and so forth. But the point is that they sell software. Yeah, yeah. Right. How many other startups do you know that sell software? Not many. Either they're selling a service, yeah, which is most cases, yeah. So they need, yeah, yeah. So in those com- in those type of companies, operations, finance is the biggest component yeah. of the business. So you take guys. Uh, <laughs> so I mean, I like your your idea of diversifying. Like I'm, I'm very on board with diversifying, mm. but I don't know that diversifying to something like I have no interest in say something like finance. You don't or, have to. Or like operations. Okay, let, let, me, let me give you an example. <laughs> okay, yeah. If I become a product data analyst, mm-hmm. or if I become a financial data analyst, mm-hmm. I am not a finance professional. I'm not a CPA yeah, yeah, yeah. person. But if I get to finance, I can utilize my data skills to make finance more B- improve. efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. If I'm an operational data analyst, I can go to the ops team. I can be embedded in the ops team and help them figure out uh, route optimization. Mm. I can figure them out how to set up the warehouse to make it more efficient. Yeah. Uh, for that. So I am just uh, future-proofing my job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am not becoming a complete uh, professional in another field. Okay. So yeah. you're just figuring out how to... Yeah. 
figuring out how to to make, reinvent yourself yes. basically <laughs> yeah. and you know you know think about mm-hmm. people who started off let's say programming in uh, php yeah php is almost i don't know i think it's a dying language yes they had to learn python yeah. they had now javascript is taking over they had to adapt so you always have to look at either what <clears throat> what new technologies is coming in or what realities are you are you living in okay the reality in kenya is business skills are very important yes business yeah. communication communication is very important yeah so aside from being able to write very efficient code yeah can i be able to be a very good communicator yeah exactly can, uh, yeah can i if i go to a business can i understand business speak business speak yeah and and i f- I, i figured out you know one of the things that most people ask me is like how do i grow my career how do i go to the next level I'm like business skills and communication is <laughs> that all you need <laughs> every, every time we went to meetings together for, for the it was almost business yeah, speak yeah it's business speak yeah it's, it's business speak so if you can attach your whatever you're doing to business speak and you're a very good communicator then now you can even without being very technical you can manage a team yeah. and you can communicate to whoever matters like this is where we are uh if they say this is what it means uh, yeah. that's, that's why there were business translators <laughs> <laughs> in the in, in the team so <laughs> and you 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 you'll be amazed how many tech people engineers data scientists who solve problems they don't understand if and one of the things that uh when i ask people like look at any industry ask yourself what are the top 3 problems for that industry yeah and then what are the top 3 metrics that matter for that industry like if you go to banking yes they'll they'll worry about cost of funds yeah they'll worry about interest rates exactly uh within a company and perhaps uh customers yeah. chan for example yeah uh, what are the other problems first problems they worry about to be fraud yes fraud compliance, compliance. risk all that risk. kind of those stuff those are yeah. the things they look at so when you work in that industry those are the problems you're supposed to be solving and those are the th- areas where you can have impact so if you come and cut fraud by half you can't as a bank <laughs> I'm just saying if you come in and use whatever Oh, you can't you come and cut it. Yeah, I thought you were saying yeah, cut the department, sorry. No, no, come in and cut from my <laughs> half or come and tell me like, okay, I can source money at a cheaper rate. Yeah, that's you're solving a business. Yeah. You're solving a business problem yeah. and that's how you attach yourself so that you become future proof against <laughs> layoffs. <laughs> I mean, I um, I also for me diversification is key, but there's also diversifying with understanding trends that's like the world is going towards Absolutely. like I, i think like say i'll just take example in in the health space people yeah. are getting you know there's unhealthiness coming in people don't know how to eat well people yeah. don't know what to drink people need physiotherapists and mm-hmm. psychologists and you know if you have an interest in that there's absolutely a op- opportunity to diversify into one of these industries that have that I think will be very upcoming. Yeah, you know, uh, I was involved in a project mm. uh, during COVID. Uh it was but the government trying to help because uh getting healthy means eating good food. Yes. For that. Exercising. And exercising. Yeah, yeah. And there was a campaign like grow your own food at home. Yeah, I love that, yeah. So like in your balcony, yeah. you know, grow your own food, uh you you, you can control that. It was quite a flop. <laughs> Why? It's because it's you know we, we you can have all these great ideas of what you'd <laughs> like to change then you realize we're not you know the way someone says we are have over reliance on maize why yeah. can't we diversify to sorghum millet for that yeah yeah but someone know I want my ugali the way the way they want the ugali the way they yeah I, so changing people's behavior is one of the hardest thing yeah yeah I agree that. so when you get into problem solving and figuring out diversification and sort of that's why i said sitting with people with the customers and trying to understand how do they do things what do they have these beliefs yeah. how do you break those beliefs it's extremely important for you to eventually yeah. solve i mean i agree with you those those problems so yeah. in healthcare we're like okay you know we would like to have a new way of doing something so there's a business case and that's how startups get built yeah but then realize most people don't take the good time to to, to you know figure out a problem even if there's a problem or you want to move people from one thing to the another who told you we need efficiency maybe we, we don't <laughs> need it maybe we thrive in an inefficiency maybe, maybe there's we, someone we, benefiting from inefficiency yeah, you never so, know uh, yeah. you and your uh, <laughs> in uh, efficiencies go out the back and forget forget about it so mm. 
uh, I love diversification as a concept. As a concept. As a concept. Mm-hmm. But how you operationalize it, it's it depends. It's heavily dependent on the country, the people, what yeah. you're selling, uh, the industry. Sometimes it doesn't work. Like you say, diversify my, diversify my skills against being uh, laid off. It may work for certain people. Yeah. It may work for certain fields. It doesn't mean it will work for for everyone. So the diversification is okay as a concept, as a one way of making yourself uh, not be laid off. <laughs> Or but just another source of income in case. If you can do side gigs, and they say almost all Kenyans are. Everyone in <laughs> Kenya has one or two side gigs. Do it if you can. Yeah. It makes some people inefficient. It makes yeah. other people efficient. Yeah. For for that. If if having side gigs, even side gigs is a form of diversification. Yeah, yeah, right? I agree. Completely yeah, agree. Yeah, for that. If you can do it, by all means, go ahead and uh, yeah. do it. And I think also like with diversification and side gigs, I guess it's always like planning while you're in that job in the golden cage where you're receiving high salaries but you still need to think but but, but no we we, we what we are, happened i i i need that uh, bmw <laughs> i i i need to move from eastlands to westlands <laughs> and kilimani so i wouldn't have any disposable income <laughs> it takes a lot of financial discipline to do that to do that yeah because you're like okay uh, with my salary i can't be afford to be seen in some shady club <laughs> <laughs> on Mombasa, so I, I gotta be where this the cool people m- the hang people out. So it's 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 one of those personal I individual mean, yeah decisions that you have to make if you want to future proof yourself against. You know, I was uh, uh, do you know Noni Noni? What's her second name? She used to be. I met her at Safaricom. I know very many Nonis. <laughs> then she went to Oxfam. Mm-hmm. Then went to a company called Change.org. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. I know Change.org. Then I think she was laid off. Oh, no. <laughs> Jeez, I thought this would not be mine. <laughs> yeah. Good story. <laughs> it's a good story. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh-huh. So she got laid off. Then uh, I think she was not laid off properly. Mm. And then uh, she was also not given uh, benefits. Like Oof. when you get laid off. Yeah, there should be a severance package. So she, I think she was never. So she put on a petition online for people oh. To, to. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think I did. and then she proposed something that there should be an insurance against layoff or like, But there is. Yeah, okay, but she didn't take it. Oh, but now okay. <laughs> uh, like you can sign up with some banks and they give you like Yeah, and then they ins- pay your loans. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, for like a certain amount of time. Yeah. Now she did a good thing, but now given her uh, predicament or situation, yeah. Now she's brought the need of having that employment uh insurance. Yeah. People are like, oh, we're gonna get laid off so another way of <laughs> dealing with the layoffs is having that insurance so when you're making a lot of money you're making good money take that employment yeah uh insurance insurance so that i mean if you're in a startup i always say you have to take <laughs> that <laughs> so you, you take, take it so yeah. that let's say it covers uh yeah. like one year of rent yeah. and one year of any loans that you own yeah. which means you're generally not worried even if you don't yeah, have exactly. um, uh, a job so that's another means of ensuring that you're taken care of yeah. uh, in in the event of a layoff. Yeah. Off yeah. the top of my head, I think Stanbic does it. Stanbic, yeah, Stanbic mm. Bank. Yeah. I I uh, I think who was it? Bankelele Limo Taboy. I think he was he tweeted something about it. There, there are several banks. Oh, there are several banks. Okay. That offer it, but it's one of those products that don't get sold a lot. Yeah, cause uh, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't very hard. Like for me, I remember trying to sign up for it, but yeah. <laughs> you never, you never thought you needed it. You're like, no, I'm, like I think employable. What do you no, mean? I don't. Like to be honest, no, I understand. Like to, I think as you grow in your career, you understand you are very dispensable, and it's. You are like I think like no, when you get started your career you think you're a rock star. You're, you're a rock star. <laughs> then you're like no actually I'll die tomorrow or today. Yeah. My job will be advertised tomorrow. So yeah. it's like um, I don't think I'm a rock star in that sense. Um I'm good at what I do, yes. Yeah. But I am dispensable. Yeah, I so, need to protect so myself. So now I, I think with all the layoffs going around yeah. then it will ring back like you know you you, you know you you hustle and then get that you get your next job the first thing you sign up for the <laughs> is is that yeah. For, for, for the Whether it's big tech or little tech or we, uh, now it's a Affecting everyone. Everybody, you know, exactly. We used to think that big tech is where Ish. no one gets laid off. You know, Amazon is having a second round of layoffs. Oh yeah. They let go like 11k, I think. Yeah. Now they're doing a second round of another 10k. Uh, but I guess I don't know. I think it's like I think shame on big tech for doing this in Africa. Like honestly. Why? 
Because first of all, it's probably their market with the cheapest labor. First of all. I, I, I'm not sure. I've not worked for big tech, but, but I think, like, I, I think the like salaries are quite way, yeah, they're good way if, much farther than what is offered. Uh, with, yes. Yeah. But like, if you look at like the, in Africa, it's probably but, but the cheapest know, form of labor. No, but you know, salary is usually pegged to cost of living. Well, in <laughs> Europe and the US, cost of living is way high. So, I like this argument of cost of living. In Europe and US, you have, as you said, what are the interest rates? One or two percent. You have healthcare systems that work. But, you have but, but how roads much is, But how much is your great. rent? You but, have, but how much is your rent? Again, it's for, like... For, for, for 100k in Nairobi, you'd live in a very good place. Yeah. 100k in New York is, is well, okay, a, a windowless <laughs> one-room house. Mm-hmm. I, I remember, okay, outside of I, housing, I, tell me something else. Let's talk about food. Again, it's very expensive. I, I, th- th- nah, th- I don't no, think. No, no. Like Nairobi no, no. is hell. Like no, especially living in Nairobi. Absolutely. Not. I, I had. A, I had it a friend. It depends where you live in Nairobi. What no, you're eating then? No, 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 no. Majority of Nairobi is cheap compared. I think there's a company that does like a living index. Okay. On how cheap? I think Paris, Singapore. Okay, yeah, Singapore is expensive. New York, uh, San Francisco, or like the crazy. Thing. And I'll tell you, let Dude, me give you an example. Salt, the price of salt has just gone up in this bloody country. But how much? But how much? I didn't even no. I'm like, come on. No, let me, let me tell you. You know, there's a, a few years back, I was reading an article where it was showing that Facebook engineers are living in the streets. And in America. Like, in, Very in many people are living, living in the, the, in no, the no, streets in America. No, if, you live, if you live in the street and you have no job, that's okay. <laughs> Until there's a, a former colleague at IHAB who uh, ended up working for Salesforce mm-hmm. in, in San Fran. And, and they got laid off too, I think. Yeah, so, so we were, I was just chatting him up, like, you know, how, how's life over there? He was telling me, dude, he earns equivalent of uh, 3.5 million Kenya shillings, mm. but he can barely send 100K home. Mm. So 3.5, you know, I think they get hammered with about 40% uh, income tax. Yeah. Right. And he's telling me, uh, for you to get a good house, an okay house is like 400k Kenya shillings. Mm-hmm. But if you need like a two or three bedroom house in San Fran, it's 700k Kenya shillings. Mm-hmm. Remember, we're doing deductions yeah, of, yeah. Of, of that. They told me food is very expensive, such that if you used to have a normal breakfast, it will cost equivalent of 700 shillings. What is a normal breakfast? Think, think, <laughs> think about what you have in the morning bread. No. Oh, what, what do you have? <laughs> What do you have? Who? What do people have breakfast in Nairobi? Okay, bread and tea. Bread so, and tea. Mm, and maybe, maybe like an, an egg. Like an egg. And a sausage, yeah. So that would cost you 700 shillings yeah. in San Francisco. You've not done anything fancy, right? Mm. Then, so he had to move to Auckland, which is a little bit out of uh, San Fran. So he has fare. So sometimes, to make it cheap, he takes a ferry <laughs> across. Mm-hmm. But if to use Uber or other forms of pu- public transport, he needs to budget Maybe close to 30 to 50K a you month. You can't work from home? No, at that point, there was no working from oh, okay. home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Then you'll have to have one dinner here or uh, like, uh, you know, you take somebody out. Then is the cheapest dinner you can have is equivalent of 5K Kenya shillings. Right? And then add things like you have to buy clothing. Right? Uh, you have other things that uh, your bills for electricity yeah. comes in very crazy, especially when it's cold. Right, so when he adds up everything, he's like, "Dude, I remain with like two hundred k Kenya shillings, mm. and then I have to send hundred k to my mother." <laughs> yes, black this white tax. Black yeah, tax. black tax <laughs> on top of that. So, <laughs> given that life is really, really expensive mm. there, you could be earning, you know, I don't know, a million Kenya shillings, but housing by itself is insane. Yeah. Food is insane because they import. All the, all the food. California is a desert. Mm. So most of the food comes in either from Mexico or from other areas in the in the US. Transportation is costly unless you're using a bike or a train. And if you live very far for cheap rent, then transportation cost becomes very uh, high. So I was chatting with him. It's like, it's actually really, that story about Facebook engineers living in the street is actually true. And uh, you, uh, everything seems to be, very, to be uh, expensive. In Nairobi, Nairobi is not even ranked amongst the most expensive cities in the world, right? If you and the, the, I don't know, it's it's not, it's not. Trust me, I I I, I was looking. There's this. I think there's. When there's, was when was the a, last time this? Uh, there's a Twitter handle. I think I try to remember the name. I forget. They do like analysis of cost of living across different countries yeah. in the in the world. But uh, do the, the London, person who is doing you, this are they going to the Indigo to? 
is this average? To benchmark let's, say, this let's say for example, uh, we take what's the average rent in Nairobi? Do you know? I'd say maybe like forty. Oh, that's okay. yeah. You don't live in the normal Nairobi. <laughs> I don't live in there. It's lower than that. Very lower than that. Majority of people live in one bedroom houses. Yeah. And servants' quarters. Yeah. No servants' quarters. Uh, be, uh, what do you call them? What? Studios. One. Studio apartments. Bed sitters. Bed yeah. sitters. Right. Yeah. Those and majority of the population in Kenya will be in Dandora, Kayole, Kibera. That's where. But Chris, I'm, again, Rent I'm bringing there back to working, working professionals. Like, do those, those go to, are those they who work are going in the industrial area? They are welders. <laughs> they are carpenters. No, okay, back maybe when I'm saying working professionals, people in tech, because we were talking about how big tech. Of course, no, it doesn't mean if a tech guy like, can live in Dandora if they wish. Yeah, if they wish, exactly. But, then, they, like, but, they, but they may feel like this is not where I belong. <laughs> so they will go to Kilimanjaro and pay 150k rent. But that is equivalent of your engineer in San Francisco doing the same thing. No, but where are you? At the end of the day, that's what I am saying. Like, why are we saying that it's okay for these engineers to want to go and live in, like, Dandora and say it's okay because of cost of living? I want the same lifestyle as my colleague who's working in San Francisco. At the end of the day, so that is what my issue is. It goes back to <laughs> an employer like, there's this guy who's willing to take 300k salary, live in Buruburu, but you want a 600k salary mm. so that you live in uh, Kilimani, right? Yeah. Then the question becomes, what's the productivity between these two people? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a reason why India was a very big IT hub back oh, yeah. in the day. And yeah. now no longer it's the case. Because yeah. there were very people who were willing to take very low salaries yeah. for high output. But it, over time, they started demanding more. More. Yeah. And then become expensive. Now, Eastern Europe is where a lot of engineers come from. That's so true. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, also over time, they'll become expensive. Then it comes to but Africa. Africa. <laughs> then Africa will become expensive. <laughs> Go South America. Yeah. yeah. South America, I don't know where it will move to. It's just the nature of uh, things. Whoever is cheapest and has high output, that's where employer will draw majority of the employees from there. Mm, okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I guess we didn't ag we agreed to disagree on that one. <laughs> Perfectly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else you wanted to discuss on? Yeah, the layoffs. I guess you have kind of been affected by this. <laughs> I keep bringing back this, and you're like, "Don't uh, talk actually, about this, Mangare." Uh, no, I've been affected actually twice. <laughs> twice. Yeah. yeah. Oh and, my brother. Uh, <laughs> no, it's 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 to me one of the things that I I came to brought it back to me is like the first thing you have to do is that you're dispensable yeah yeah I that's, agree. A, that's the first reality you're providing a service for a company yep when those services are no longer useful to a yep. company or they're not critical as other things you just have to accept you have that, to accept, yeah. that another reason that most people don't know that happens to layoffs is your salary yeah of course you get there you want to be paid the highest salary possible but when layoffs come it's easy to lay off one person who earns a million shillings than 10 people who earn 100k. Yeah. So if I do away with this one person, I'm okay than laying off 10 people. Yeah. So just know that once you demand that high salary, you're always a target for layoff. In some startups, I guess. In general companies. In general. Okay. In general, it happens everywhere. It's, it's one lesson I remember my uncle was joking about me. He was like, uh, uh, he works in a bank. So he was like, when it comes to layoff, one of the, f in fact, apart from which department you work for, one of the heavy factors is your salary. Is your salary. And like, if I do away with this guy, I can keep five more people. Yeah. So instead of firing these five people, why can't I just lay off this one person? Yeah. So it's good to go there and demand a high salary, which is you think is your worth. But at the back of your mind, know that you're always a target for mm. layoffs. Should anything happen or the company, mm. profits go... Uh, go down. So that's something it's great to have people to have at the back of their uh, their mind. Of course, be paid your worth. Yeah, yeah. Th that, that's that's okay. Yeah. But just know that when the company becomes shaky, yeah, they come for you. Yeah. That's 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 just a reality. That at the end of the day, they're trying to conserve money. The company is trying to conserve yeah. <laughs> money uh, for that. So that's one thing. Uh, it should always good to have uh, in your mind. And Emotionally, have you dealt with? <laughs> no, to me. <laughs> <laughs> Tell I think, us. I, I think once you get laid off several <laughs> times, you sort of become a hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it's. I, I think to, to to me, I think I was I was reading something off LinkedIn that was saying, 
just make yourself more marketable. Yeah, I agree. Right? Once once you're always marketable, layoffs don't really yeah. affect you that much. Yeah. Right? I know you know I've worked to companies where somebody has worked one job for ten years. Uh, and then when the layoffs come, it is it's terror. It <laughs> it it completely can, yeah. it completely throws them apart because you know they never thought about that, never leave their jobs, yeah. uh, so on and so forth. So to me, I'm like as long as I'm always learning, as long as I know I can do something out there of value, and I'm not afraid of starting from the bottom. I love that. That is very important. <laughs> it's, it's like uh, always like it's okay. Let me. Go back as money. Yeah, so then like, it's money. I, I, I maybe have risen up to the level of a head of department. Yeah. But I'm I'm willing to go back to start as an engineer. Yep. I uh, and uh, someone needs to do the work. I agree. I yeah. know sometimes as you scale your, your your career, you lose those up and down. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like okay, I'm I'm willing to start. And uh, I think the very best example was uh, Doctor Bitang in demo. Mm. I was reading an article he wrote where he said when he was a PS. His phone will ring all the time. Mm. So once his job ended, his nobody. phone... Nobody. Nobody. Hey, you have no power. <laughs> it's unfortunate. And, and that is the reality of people. <laughs> like at the end of the you're day. You're no longer useful. Yeah, you, you have no use for me. <laughs> and I always say it's like, mm. I like how you said, figure out how to market yourself. Those people will soon, yeah. like build something of your yeah. own. Yeah. And he, he added something <laughs> in his article which said, he's willing to do anything to feed his family. Yeah. He, he went back to become a university don. I think he had some buses plying. Imagine that's is Gigada. <laughs> Here I am, here I'm trying to do. I mean, I haven't been laid off, but it's just like, you know, you have to plan for that. You're like yeah. doing podcasts, making natural ginger beers and natural <laughs> wines and trying to sell them. You have to, like at the end yeah. of the day, it's like, need to feed my family. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and he had this idea that there are two separate things here. There is my career yes. and there's me feeding my family. And exactly. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when it comes and to you treat your career like a business. I always yeah. tell people it is a business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he said, yeah. when it comes to feeding my family, I will do anything to feed my family. Yep. If it makes me becoming a conductor in a matatu, do I it. will do it. Yeah. My and career yeah. is not something else. I need to build, grow, manage for that. So if my career fails, doesn't mean my family yeah, has to fail. fail. It doesn't. Yeah. yeah. I'll wake up and figure out how to get myself uh, paid. And I think to me, that's the attitude that I adopted. So I'm yeah. like, okay, uh, I don't have a job or I've been laid off or you know, I decided to leave a, a job for whatever reasons. But then I'm like, okay, I'll wake up in the morning. The child will be crying for milk. Rent has to be paid. Has to be paid, yeah. So I wake up, I'm like, okay, what, do, what skills do I have? What do I need to do to get myself uh, paid and get my family fed? That might be counter. And also changing your lifestyle comes big with that yeah 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 that might be counter to your career because of like okay maybe i look at my cv i want my cv to look as if i am growing going, 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 going. yeah and life is up down up down up down we'd like to pretend like you know it's, it's, it's just a linear, um, that's the, we go up and, and and that's that's not the uh, the, the, the truth uh, it's always have and then if especially in the past three years with COVID, war in Ukraine, yeah. interest rates going up. You, 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 never, it's, 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 you don't expect your career to grow linearly. Yeah. It, it doesn't because if I don't have a job and my son and or daughter is crying, I'm going to almost pick whatever is available yeah, to me. we'll go sell bananas on the streets. And to figure me, it out. And to yeah. me, I think, I think it's perfectly uh, fine. And I remember <laughs> there's this job that I applied for mm -hmm. a while back. I think like two years back. So they were looking at my CV and, you know, it's like up, up, down, up, up. They were like, you work for a corporate, a very big company. Then you work for a small company. Then you went to a startup. They must be wrong with something with you. Uh. I didn't like saying that again. <laughs> I was like, you have no idea how I was like, life on the streets, man. You don't, you don't know how the streets operate. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get paid. Yeah. At the end of the day, work is just getting paid. Yeah. It's an exchange of services. At yeah. The end of the day. yeah. That's what was available to me at, at that the point. Time. Yeah. No, you, do, you didn't plan your career well. I'm like, how, how do you plan your career? <laughs> and you're sleeping hungry. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's more realistic to me where someone he has a career that's up and down than someone who seems to have like a very smooth path. You even get to understand life better. Yeah. It tends to humble you. Yes, yes. Because you tend to, you tend to treat people better. Yeah, I agree. When people, sometimes they need a break in life. 
yeah. they're having personal issues yeah financial issues things that are affecting them you tend to treat them better than someone who expects like you started from a junior data analyst senior data analyst head of department director of so, so the everyone looks for that smooth linear smooth, yeah growth but that's not life it's not life and sometimes those are external factors yeah, yeah you who knew no covid control. would come here nobody who knew Russia will invade, invade Ukraine. No. Probably Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, it's, yeah. So, it just, you know, that's why uh, tech was an unreal world. It was unreal. Yes. Mm. Now it's being, yeah. now, now it's being real. Yeah. So, uh, it's this, 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 uh, uh, another thing. So, okay, cool. the more people become real, the better it is. You're no more different than someone who's selling meat yeah. <laughs> How's a butcher? A butcher. Mm. The butcher guy just wants to buy for a shilling and sell for two. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Is there anything else we haven't touched on? There's the yeah, is there anything else we haven't touched on? I think we've covered off. I think we've covered most uh, most of it. I'll just say layoffs is not the end of the world. Layoffs are not the end of the, I mean I completely agree. It's not the end of the world. If you believe in yourself, you believe that you can make it in this world. Yeah. There's something out there. And do the, do the work. I yeah. The and uh, yeah. I think, especially in Kenya, in Africa, someone said there are very few jobs, but there's so many opportunities. Yes. So if you have that attitude yeah. and that mindset, you'll make it. Lovely. Yeah. Really good putting shots. I completely agree. <laughs> Layoffs are not the end of the world. There's mm-hmm. problems, there's opportunities. Ooh. And if you have a layoff story that you want to come share with us, um, you're always welcome. But for now, thanks for listening and make sure you comment, share and subscribe. Kwaheri. Peace out.